We're now going to take a trinomial that has a leading coefficient other than one, and we're going to use the same process that we did when the leading coefficient was one. So we can begin with algebra tiles. We have three of the x squareds, eight of the x's, and again, we're gonna put one here, one here, until we fill in the rectangle, and then the four little ones are going to go in the corner. We can see that because we have all positive tiles, we have a length of three x plus two, and we have a height or a width of the one x plus two. These are the factors of this trinomial. And again, we can check by foiling this out. So we multiply the first terms to get back to that three x squared. The outside product of six x plus the inside product of two x combines to give us the eight x. And the last terms two times two give us that four. When we simplify a polynomial, we remove the brackets. If we were multiplying two binomials together, we use the process of foiling. We multiply the first terms in each bracket together to get the 2x squared. We take the outside terms on each bracket. We multiply those together to get the 10x. We take the inside terms on each bracket, multiply those together to get the 3x, and then multiply the last term in each bracket together to get that 15x. When you combine the like terms together, we're going to get that 13x. We're now going to be given a trinomial, and we're going to do the opposite process where we are creating brackets in order to come up with the factors. So you can take a look at this, and we can see that this first squared term is a result of multiplying the first terms in each bracket. We can see that this last constant term is the result of multiplying the last terms in each bracket, and this 13x is a combination of the outside product and the inside product. So when we go to factor this trinomial, we're going to begin by saying what are the two numbers that we need that are going to multiply to the product of a times c and add to that b value, and then we're going to reverse the foiling process. Always check for a greatest common factor first, so we can see that there is no number that will divide evenly into 3, 8, or 4. So we're going to begin by taking our a term of 3, and we're going to multiply it by the c term of 4. So a times c when we multiply those together is 12. So we need to look for two numbers that will multiply to 12. That's the product of a times c, and we'll add to the b value of x. Now remember, b is always the number in front of the x term. a is always the number in front of the x squared term. c is always the constant term with no x attached to it. So we know that the two numbers that multiply to 12 and add to 8 are going to be 6 and 2. Those form the outside and inside product of our factors. Okay, so then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna begin by setting up our brackets. We're going to say, what are the first terms in each bracket that will multiply to give us that three x squared? Well, three is a prime number, so the only numbers are going to be three x and one x. Those are gonna combine to get us back to that three x squared. Now, we have to say three times what is going to give us one of these numbers, and the order doesn't matter. We can see that three times no whole number will give us two, but we do know that three times two will give us six. So we can go ahead and fill in that plus two. So we now have the outside product. So then the inside product is going to be two. So we're gonna say one times what is going to give us that two. So we know that will also be a two. And then the last term is a check. So two times two, does that give us four? And then quickly foil this out to make sure you did in fact factor it correctly. So we're going to have three x squared that gets us back to the first term. 6x plus 2x is 8x, 2 times 2 is 4. Factoring polynomials is going to be the first step in many different mathematical topics coming up in future years, so you need to be able to do this really quickly. So this reverse foiling is ultimately going to be the fastest method of doing this, but in the beginning, some people like to use what we call cross product just to help them organize. So we can say, okay, what are the two numbers that are going to multiply to get us back to that first term of the three? So we know again, three is a prime number, so we're gonna have three times one. And then we can say three times what will give us one of those numbers. And notice that they have to be integers, so we're only using positive or negative whole values. So we can see that three times two is going to give us that six. And then we're gonna say one times what is going to give us that other value of two. That is going to be a two, and so those are going to form your factors. And then you would fill in the variable. So this is three x plus two. This is gonna be the one x plus two. So again, we're going to check first of all, is there a greatest common factor that we can divide out of all of those terms? And in this case, there's not. 
we're going to begin by looking for those two numbers. So what two numbers are going to multiply to give us that A times C product? So 2 times 5 is going to give us a product of 10. And what two numbers add to give us that B value of 11? So the two numbers that multiply to 10 and add to 11 are 10 and 1. Those form the outside and inside products. So then we can go ahead and we can set up our brackets. And we're going to say what number times what number gets us back to that 2x squared. And again, 2 is a prime number. So we're going to have 2 and 1. Then we're going to say 2 times what whole number will give us one of those numbers. And again, the order doesn't matter. So I can see that 2 plus 5 is going to give me the outside product. And then we're going to say 1 times what is going to give us the other value, the inside product. And we know 1 times 1 will give us that 1. The last term is a check. So 5 times 1 is going to give us 5. And then quickly FOIL this out. So we have 2x squared. And then we have 10x plus 1x is 11x. And then 1 times 5 is going to give us that 5. And again, one more time here. In the beginning, if you want to use the cross product to help you, then that's okay until you get the hang of what we're doing here. So we're looking what, what two numbers multiply to give us that value of 2. And we can see that 2 times 1. So we're going to fill those into the first column. We're going to say 2 times what gives us one of those numbers. And we can see 2 times 5. We're going to say 1 times what is going to give us that other value of 1. And we can see that's going to be a 1. And then those, again, become your two factors. And as always, anytime we go to factor a polynomial, we are always, always, always checking, is there a greatest common factor that we can remove first? Then go ahead and factor depending on the polynomial that you're given. All right, so let's take a look at some examples here. So I can see that in my first one, I have a trinomial. There is no greatest common factor that we can remove. So we're going to multiply a times c together. So that's the coefficient in front of the squared term times the constant term. That's going to give us a product of 9. What are the two numbers that will multiply to 9 and add to that b value of 10? Well, we can see that the numbers are going to be 9 and 1. Those are going to form the outside and inside products. So then we can go ahead and set up our brackets. So we're going to say what two numbers multiply to get back to that 3. 3, again, is a prime number. So we're going to have 3x times x. That multiplies to get us that first term. Then we're going to say 3 times what integer is going to multiply to give us one of those numbers. And again, we can see 3 times 3 will give us the 9. And then the inside, 1 times what is going to give us 1. And we know that's going to be a 1. And then quickly, let's FOIL this out. So we have 3x squared. That's good. We have 9x plus 1x is 10x. And then 1 times 3 is 3. So this is correctly factored. In our next example, we can see that we have another trinomial. And again, check, is there a greatest common factor? There is not. So we're going to begin by multiplying a times c. So we're looking for those two numbers that multiply to 24 and add to 11. We can see that 8 and 11 are going to give us those values. And then once we have those, we can go ahead and set up our brackets. What two numbers multiply to get us back to that first term of 2x squared? And we know that's going to be 2x times x. And then we're going to say 2 times what is going to give us one of those numbers? Well, we know that 2 times 4 is going to give us 8. And then 1 times what is going to give us that other factor. That's our inside product. So we're going to have a 3. The last term is a check. 3 times 4 is 12. And then again, you're going to know if you did this correctly, if you can FOIL it back. So we're going to have 2x squared, and we're going to have 8x plus 3x is 11x. 3 times 4 is 12. Now, the directions will always be factor. That implies you're factoring completely. So if there is a greatest common factor that you forgot to remove, just take a look at the brackets. Is there one you can now remove? And then pull it out at the end. So we can see in this case, there is no greatest common factor other than 1 between 2 and 3, which isn't going to change anything. And again, 1 and 4, there is no greatest common factor other than 1. So we're good. OK, next one. Again, check. Greatest common factor, there is not one. So we're going to look for two numbers that multiply to negative 30 and add to negative 13. Now in our next one here, again, we're going to begin the same way. Is there a greatest common factor that we can remove? And there is not. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 30 and add to negative 13. Now some people 
have a hard time finding those numbers initially. So if you take a look at these, where do you want to start? Well, if we look at the numbers that add to negative 13, we have negative 9 and negative 4, we have negative 3 and negative 10, we have 100 and negative 13, we have 98 and negative 111. There are so many possibilities that add to negative 13, so that's not going to be super helpful. So instead we want to say what are the numbers that will multiply to negative 30 because there are a limited number of factors for that one. So we're going to scoot over to the side here and make a table. So again, we're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 30 and we're going to ignore the sign for a second. So let's just look at what multiplies to get positive 30 and we're going to go in order. So we know 1 times 30 is 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, 4 does not divide into 30 evenly. We're going to get a decimal and we know 5 times 6. And if you go in order, you can see how we loop back around here so you know you have all of the factors. Now because this is a negative 30, I know that one of those numbers is negative. I'm not sure which one at this point, so let's make the first number negative. And then we're going to write down those factors again and this time we're going to make the second number negative. And then we're going to go ahead and add them up. So we have negative 1 plus 30 is 29. Negative 2 plus 15 is 13. Negative 3 plus 10 is 7. Negative 5 plus 6 is 1. And then 1 plus negative 30 is negative 29. 2 plus negative 15 is negative 13. 3 plus negative 10 is negative 7. And 5 plus negative 6 is that negative 1. And you may not have to do all of them. Just writing them out might be enough to help you to see which ones are going to add to that negative 13. Well, negative 13 is right here. So the two numbers that we want are going to be that 2 and negative 15. And as you can see, this is a very time consuming process. So you do want to have your multiplication facts in your head here. But you could use this strategy if you had really large numbers. Okay, so the two numbers we want are that negative 15 and positive 2 and then we're going to go ahead again and set up our brackets. Now what multiplies to get a 6m squared? This time you have a couple options. We could put 6 and 1. We could also put 3 and 2. And I'm just going to show you what would happen if we were to put 6 and 1. This is not going to be correct but let's just take a look. So if I were to go 6m times 1m is 6 times any whole number going to give me one of those factors? And we can see that it's not. So when you're looking at what are the two numbers that could multiply to get back to that first term, you also want to make sure that those two numbers are factors of the outside and inside product because they're going to be factors of both. So I can see 6 and 1 are clearly not going to work. So what other two numbers could multiply to get 6? Well, we could have 3m times 2m and then check is 3 times something going to give us one of those numbers and 3 times negative 5 is going to give us negative 15 that means 3 is a factor of that negative 15 and then 2 times what is going to give us that other value of 2 and we can see that that's a 1. Make sure that the two numbers you put in for the first term are also going to be factors of the outside and then inside products and again, the last term is a check. Quickly foil this back. So we have 6m squared. We have negative 15m plus 2m is that negative 13m. And it's really important. Make sure you have the correct sign on the correct integer. And then 1 times negative 5 is that negative 5. All right. So hopefully we're getting the hang of this here. We're going to take a look at a couple more. Is there a greatest common factor? And there is not. So we're going to multiply a times c together and we're looking for those two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add to positive 1. We know that's going to be 4 and negative 3. So then we're going to go ahead and we're going to set up our binomials and we're going to say what multiplies to give us back 6x squared. And again, we're taking a look. We want the two numbers that multiply to get us that 6 to also be factors of 4 and 3. So I don't want to choose 6 and 1. 1 is a factor of every number, but 6 is not going to be a factor of either of those. So I'm going to go with my 3x times 2x, and that's going to work because 3 is a factor of negative 3, 2 is a factor of 4. So I'm going to say 3 times what will give me that negative 3, and we can fill in that negative 1. So that is my outside product. And then we're going to have 2 times what is going to give us that other number of 4, and we can fill in the two. So this is what I mean by the order doesn't matter. This does not have to be outside and inside. One is outside, one is inside. It doesn't matter which one goes where. So then we have 3x times 2x gets us back to 6x squared. 
we have negative 3x plus 4x is that positive 1x, and then 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So please check really quickly, make sure that you have the correct signs on the correct values. And one last one before we throw in a little bit of a twist here. All right, so multiply. 12 times 2 is 24. We're looking for two numbers that multiply to 24 and add to negative 11. We know those numbers are negative 8 and negative 3. I know that if I have a positive value they're multiplying to, they either both need to be negative or they both need to be positive. If they're adding to a negative, I know they're going to both be negative. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to set up our brackets. What two numbers multiply to get 12? Now, you have a few options here, but again, you're also looking for which are factors of that 8 and 3. So I know the numbers I need to choose are going to be 4y and 3y. I can't choose 6 and 2. 6 isn't a factor of either of those. I can't choose 12 and 1. 12 is not a factor of either of those. So then we're going to say 4 times what gives us one of those numbers. And I know that 4 times negative 2 will give me negative 8. And then we're going to say 3 times what will give us that other number. And we know that we have a negative 1. So again, you're going to know if you did this correctly, if it foils back. So we have 12y squared, negative 8y, plus negative 3y is negative 11y, and uh-oh, we have a problem because this is negative xy, and this is an x squared. So because we also have a second variable here, I'm going to go ahead and put in that second variable. So now when we check this, we're still going to get that 12y squared, but now we have negative 8xy minus 3xy is negative 11xy, and then negative 1x times negative 2x is a positive 2x squared. So this particular one has two variables, so we have the one variable there, and then we have the second variable there. And now in our next trinomial, we do do have a greatest common factor that needs to be removed first because each of these numbers here, each of those coefficients or that constant term is divisible by 5. So we need to remove that greatest common factor. I'm going to divide every term by 5 and then we have to check to see if this bracket is fully factored. So are there two numbers if we multiply 1 times negative 4 together, are there two numbers that will multiply to negative 4 and add to positive 3? If there's not, you are done. This is your final factored answer. If there are, then this is not yet fully factored. You have to keep going. So in this particular case, there are two numbers, 4 and negative 1 will multiply to negative 4 and will add to positive 3. So we need to keep going. So we're going to set up our brackets. What times what gets us back to a squared? And then because this is a 1, we're going to have 1 times we could choose either of those numbers. So I just went with 1 times negative 1 is going to give us that outside product. And then 1 times what is going to give us that other number of 4. So you can fill a 4 in and again check it. So we're going to have a squared. Negative 1 plus 4 is that positive 3a. And then 4 times negative 1 is that negative 4 redistribute that 5 back into the bracket and check do we get the original trinomial. And one final question, the ability to factor a trinomial is going to be one of the most crucial skills you need in terms of moving forward into higher levels of mathematics. So we want to practice to make sure that we become really proficient at this. Okay, so our next one, check. Do we have a greatest common factor? Yes, we do. So the first thing we're going to do is remove that 2. We're going to divide it out of every term. And then we need to check. Is this still factorable? Are there two numbers that multiply to 10 and add to negative 11? And yes, there are, so we need to keep going. So we're going to keep this 2 outside. We're going to set up our binomials, and we're going to say, okay, what first terms multiply to get back to that 5x squared? And we are going to have a 5x times a 1x. And then we're going to say 5 times what will give us one of those numbers. And I can see that negative 2 will give me the product of negative 10. 1 times what is going to give me a negative 1, and I can fill in that negative 1. And again, we're always, always checking. So really quickly, 5x squared, negative 10x plus negative 1x is that negative 11. Negative 1 times negative 2, positive 2. Redistribute that 2 in, so we're going to have 2 times 5 is 10x squared. 2 times negative 11, negative 22x, and 2 times 2 is 4. So we have correctly factored that trinomial.